Now the verdict is out that Sound of Freedom is a bona fide smashing hit that even the leftist Access Hollywood chill woke media are beginning to come to terms with this. They are not happy. In fact, I found an article from Newsweek which says pretty much that, yeah, Barbie and Oppenheimer did well, but they're essentially going to struggle to match the success of Sound of Freedom. Wow. Let's take a look at this article right here. It's from Jamie Burton. Again, it's from Newsweek. It's entitled, How Sound of Freedom Box Office Compares to Barbie and Oppenheimer. And this was updated as of this morning, early this morning. The numbers are in for July summer blockbuster movies. But how does the surprise hit Sound of Freedom compare with the newly released Barbie and Oppenheimer? And for the record, Barbie and Oppenheimer did exceptionally well. I mean, 162 million for one, and I forget the other for uh, Oppenheimer, but really, really well. And, and of course, many people were saying, even on this channel, commenting, saying, hey, looks like Barbie and Oppenheimer, you know, destroyed Mission Impossible. Looks like Barbie and Oppenheimer were woke, but nothing happened in terms of their lack of performance. In other words, they were trolling, which is fine. However, they are being dishonest in those two assessments. Number one, Oppenheimer is not a woke movie. Barbie really is, but it also hid its agenda from the marketing materials. None of the stuff that's in the movie I am hearing even though I didn't see it, are in the marketing materials. And now when people go back to think about seeing it again, I doubt seriously that people will want to go back and see it again when it's totally feminist, anti-male, and has other kind of negative messaging targeted for little girls. Remember, the film is rated PG-13. That's a whole nother topic in and of itself. Let's go on down here. On multiple days in July, Sound of Freedom shocked many by outperforming international blockbusters Indiana Jones and The Dial of Destiny and Mission Impossible 7, as we mentioned here before. Sound of Freedom wrestled back number one spot from the latest Mission Impossible movie on Thursday, July 20th, the day before Barbie and Oppenheimer were released. According to numbers from Box Office Mojo, this is especially impressive given it was Sound of Freedom's 17th day in movie theaters, while the seventh Mission Impossible movie had been in theaters for just nine days. What the saying is that this blockbuster movie in its seventh installment was only out nine days and it was being outperformed by a film that had been out almost actually twice as long as it just about. You never heard that? That is what Newsweek is saying and that's what I've been saying about this film and others have been saying about this film. It is a bona fide phenomenon. Even now, Barbie and Oppenheimer have taken over the top spots ahead of the box office and Sound of Freedom's popularity has helped it take third place ahead of Tom Cruise and Harrison Ford respective movies for the weekend of July 21st and 23rd. Now, I've said before, and people trolled the channel on this, that, hey, it looks like Sound of Freedom has ended Mission Impossible 7. Some would say, hey, this is the reason why. I'll put it on the screen here what people are saying. But what they're missing the point is, is that, look guys, this had an average screening that was higher than Mission Impossible 7 for over a week. And you can't fake those numbers. So anyway, but that's that. Goes on to say here, the Sound of Freedom made all of this money without an international release. So there's still money to be made once it goes to other countries. And that is phenomenal. While it appears as if Barbie and Oppenheimer have already smashed Sound of Freedom's box office achievements in their opening weekend alone, the starting points for each should be taken into consideration. In other words, let's use some perspective here. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sound of Freedom had a box office of $14.5 million, according to the Wall Street Journal. With its current box office figures, Sound of Freedom has already made more than 10 times its budget back. 10 times. That's absolutely phenomenal. Now, here we are. Now, this is where I'm saying that they're saying that, that these two movies, Oppenheimer and Barbie, are going to have a hard time matching that. Listen to this. To achieve the same measurement of success, Oppenheimer with a $100 million budget would have to take in over $1 billion at the box office, while Barbie with a reported budget of 128 to 145 million would have to earn over 1.28 billion to 1.45 billion. Here we go. Both targets are attainable, but, but, <laughs> It says here, it would be the highest grossing movie in the careers of both directors, in this case, Christopher Nolan and Gerwig. And Christopher Nolan, by the way, he is the director of The Dark Knight, Batman Returns, and many, many other films. And that is saying a ton. So they're saying indirectly, you know what? Yeah, they're gonna be good. These are gonna be good films. They're gonna make money. And I agree, they'll both make money. But you know what? They're not gonna be as successful as Sound of Freedom. So let's finally give Sound of Freedom some props. And you can see here, 
Margot Robbie said kind of the same thing. She said, maybe I was overselling. You see, Margot Robbie is a producer on the Barbie film. So she was pitching this movie to the producers and she was saying here, she said, yeah, I was pitching this to these guys and at the green lighting meeting. And you know, I'm paraphrasing here guys. You can read it for yourself. She says here, you know, I'm pitching this to these people and I'm trying to say, hey, when you give um, directors, uh, um, you give people a big idea um, with a visionary director, then, you know, things can happen. She mentioned Spielberg and about how things happen with dinosaurs and how they were able to make money there. And then she says here, she says, and then I was like, I'll quote here. And I was like, and now you have Barbie and Greta Gerwig, the director. And I think I told them that it would make a billion dollars, which maybe I was overselling, but we had a movie to make okay, unquote. What she's saying here is I lied. I oversold it. I mean, she lied, but it's okay because of the other things about it, because you know, the, the ends justify the means and it's sort of how these leftists do. They don't mind lying or stealing or cheating as long as the ends justify their wokest socialist means. And that is what we mentioned before about that whole thing about, it's not about the actual topic or the issue. It's always about the revolution and no matter what it takes, it's always more important for them to get to the end, no matter how you do it, because the ends always justify the means. So let's go over here to the actual box office again. I am now tracking Barbie and for the record, Barbie will make money. Okay. It, it's going to make money. It, it's done so well so far and the budget was not high. That's going to make money, but will it make 10 times the, the budget to match a sound of freedom? No, I don't think it will. If it does, no big deal. The point is I'm making for all you people that Oppenheimer and Barbie are going to be successful, but so is Sound of Freedom. And then Mission Impossible still could be successful if it does really well in the international box office. Time will tell. You see 162 million gross here. You see 194 gross here for Barbie and going all the way out to the actual profitability. You see right now it's under 123 million. It should get that back in about, about a week or two easily. So they should start having profit back to the studio. Same thing with Oppenheimer. I think the same thing there, but Mission Impossible, I'm not so sure. They're already losing theaters there, but we'll, we'll see. But at the end of the day, the point of this is, is that Sound of Freedom is the story here. That is the story. And to undersell Sound of Freedom and to try and say, well, it's not successful or there's people, you know, that they're buying tickets and or they're doing advanced sales and people aren't filling the seats. All that stuff is being intellectually dishonest and it is just showing you how biased you really are. And so that's what it is. Sound of Freedom is a bona fide success and people in leftist media need to understand and deal with it.